building a grassroots organization of volunteers across this country, and that's where you can help. If you go to my website, mermancane.com, those are the three main considerations. So all I'm going to say at this point, this early in the game, you never know when that could be a dark horse candidate in the race. This is Shane to be the one who plays all of the cool, cool bumper music for the radio show. He's down here with the microphone. Shane to be who do we have first? We're going to start with Robert. Robert. Uh, yes. Uh, I want your point of view on this. A majority of uh, minorities vote Democratic. Is it because they're uninformed, uneducated, stupid, lazy, or paid and, uh, paid and bought for? None of the above. The number, number one reason is yeah. uninformed. They don't know the history. Number two, they feel intimidated when they come out and they do the exit interview. But the biggest reason is they're uninformed. They don't know the history of the Republican Party, the Democrat Party. Uh, this is why in my book, They Think You're Stupid, I spent a lot of time laying out the history. But the main reason is uninformed. And number two, the intimidation factor that some people don't want to deal with. Think about it. The way they figure out how many people voted for a Republican or a Democrat, they do these exit interviews. And when people are doing exit interviews and you walk out of a precinct where you're surrounded by other black people and they say, did you vote, vote Democrat or Republican? Some people are intimidated and they're not going to say it. But it's mostly not knowing the facts and not knowing the history. So that's one of the main reasons. Yes, sir. Next question is from Alex. Alex. Even after numerous disappointments from both political parties, most Americans seem reluctant to turn to the Libertarian Party. Why do you think that is? I think that, I don't think people are reluctant to turn to the Libertarian Party. I think that the Libertarian Party just has not done a good job of creating critical mass. Uh, and, and you have to create critical mass before you can become a legitimate challenger to the other two major parties. So quite frankly, it's more on the backs and the responsibility of the Libertarian Party. The Libertarian Party has got to step up in terms of better educating people, better mobilizing people. So it's not the people that's not accepting the Libertarian Party, it's the Libertarian Party, in my humble opinion, that's not doing all that they can do in order to make people aware. Number three. Next up is Rick. Hello, Rick. Welcome to Rapid Fire. What's on your mind? Thank you, Herman. My question is, what are the chances the Democrats and Obama's crew have put up uh, another Friday night special to try and take, make them look good for the election with this um, the bombs and such are that, that, that they found on the aircraft. I think that the likelihood of some sort of special incident or some sort of special thing to try to get sympathy on behalf of the Democrats and the White House, the likelihood that of that is possible, but quite frankly, uh, I don't think it is a big likelihood because just like they have been running from the stimulus bill, they've been running from the health care bill, they've been running from the, the financial reform bill. They really don't have a lot. And I don't think that, I think that the American electorate is so aware of those failures, they're not going to be fooled with some sort of concocted incident at the last minute. People are not as stupid as they, use, as they think they are. They are not as stupid. All right, next up is Scott. Hello, Scott. Welcome to Rapid Fire. Herman, it, it seems to me now pretty common knowledge that the Congress had a chance to head off the uh, economic meltdown with Freddie Mac, Freddie May. Why did the uh, Democrats block that chance? The Democrats blocked reforming Fred, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, and it started during the Bush administration. They blocked it because of the corruption and the inside job of Barney Frank and Chris Dodd. They blocked it because Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac were cooking the books. They knew it, but then when the report came to their committees, see in the Senate you got a committee that has responsibility for oversight of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and other government service organizations. Then you got the one over in the House headed up by Barney Frank. So when, the, when, when an internal governmental organization went and investigated them, and this has been documented, Byron York wrote an article documenting that they were cooking the books, 
But then when the report was presented to those committees, they decided because they were Democrats and they knew about the corruption and the under table dealing that was going on, they simply shoved it under the rug. That's why Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac were not included, were not investigated and reformed like the Bush administration to try to do. Now let me tell you what adds insult to injury. In this new health, in this new financial deform regulation, guess which two entities don't fall under the purview of this so-called reform bill? Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. In other words, I've said it out loud. They are crooks and the same two crooks who let it happen the first time wrote this new bill, which is why it has to be reformed. That's why. It was abuse of power. Next question. Next question is from Ned. Hi, Herman. Um, I was listening to your show the other day, and you were talking about the estate tax, and you called it the death tax. Yes. And you said um, that it was like a million dollars was the cutoff. Um, I, I think you're not probably for a big gap between the rich people and the poor people. It seems like that gap has been growing since the 1950s, a very, very big gap. And then, and then it seems also that, that the Tea Party and everyone else is, is for hard work and, and, and making yourself the American way and working hard. Right. How come, how come then it, it, it's not consistent with the fact that if someone is born to uh, million, billions of dollars like the Napoleons and the, and, the, and, the, and the real rich people, why, why is it fair then that that child becomes a billionaire with no hard work and, and, no, and no effort? And then also, if, if you think that the capitalists won't be capitalists if the estate tax is there, state tax is there, why, why, is, why is it that B Buffett and Gates, who are our biggest capitalists, are for the estate tax? All right, let me, let me answer this way. First of all, we got 306 million people in this country. I don't care about Buffett and Gates. I care about the ordinary person who starts with nothing, like my dad, and they are able to develop some sort of equity, okay? So that's number one. <clears throat> Worrying about Buffett and Gates and people in that category is focusing on the wrong, wrong thing. Secondly, if you look at all of the people who have a net worth of a million dollars or more, 98% of them started with little to nothing. Don't worry about the people who are going to be rich. Worry about the people who are trying to work their tails off to become rich. So your perception of fairness and unfairness is not accurate. Don't worry about those people up there. I don't want to create barriers or disincentives for people like my dad who walked off of a farm with just the clothes on his back in order to be able to achieve his American dream. And so why should the government take a big part of his estate because he worked three jobs? Okay? Those are the people that are concerned. Right, can I have another minute? No, you don't get another minute. That breaks, that's not rapid fire, okay? No, rapid fire, you get a minute, I get a minute, and hopefully we learn from one another. How much time I got? One minute? One minute left. One more question. Um, my oh, let me say this one more thing. And another thing! Why are we worried about, why are we worried about a handful of billionaires? I want to give everybody in this, in this country an opportunity to be a millionaire or billionaire if they want to. That's what this ought to be about. is an important issue for everybody here in Georgia as well as the nation. You yes. talk about working hard. Um, education is the key to that. Yes. Georgia happens to be the number one state in the nation for incarceration. We spend $8,000 a year approximately per student going to school and we spend over $50,000 per year on incarceration. Spend your last minute talking to me about the budget for shortfalls for public education versus the overfunding and heavy lobbyists by the prison industry here in Georgia. The first thing we need to do with education is we need to unbundle education from the top down, starting in Washington, D.C. Unbundle it, untie it. That's what we have to do. And when I come back after the break, I will finish answering your question on education and what we do about the amount of money that we spend on the penal system. Because I got an answer for you that's going to take longer than 10 seconds. You'll listen to the Herman Cain Show!